Audio Jungle. So there's another very important connection that is almost always, if not always, overlooked in all the retrofits that we look at and is extremely important and I'm going to go over that with you right now. Now a lot of times we don't have a choice about where we're going to put our shear walls. So we come across here on a cripple wall and we'll find all kinds of pipes, we'll find gas meters, we'll find sections where the uh, the wall was just taken apart, you know, for whatever reason. So we don't have a lot of choice. Sometimes Sometimes we can put them on the end, sometimes in the middle. You know, we just we just put them wherever we can possibly get them, and we never know for sure where that's going to be. And there's a problem with that. And so the top of a cripple wall can easily be, you know, 50 feet long, you know, from end to end. So that would be from here to here will be 50 feet. And they don't make boards that are 50 feet long. So what you will find is you'll find a board that's 10 feet long, and then another one that's 12 feet long, and then another one that's say, you know, 25 feet long. And so all of these, you know, create breaks where they're butted up to each other. So here's an example right here. This is a break in the top plate. So that's the break. So there's a board this way. This is one length of board. And then there's the other board that goes this way. And we'll see uh, right now why that is a problem. So what happens is, let's say we put our shear wall right here at the end of the cripple wall. So here it is, it's nailed to this top plate right here. And then here's the top plate and there's a break in it. And then the rest of the house is all sitting on top of this top plate right here. So when the floor goes like this of the house, the house is sitting on top of this top plate. So it's gonna also move this top plate this way. Remember the house moves, the house is attached to the top plate of the cripple wall. So the top plate moves this way. And when the top plate moves this way, there's a break right here. So the force, you know, that movement, it stops right here. It's not connected over here. So because it's not connected, the, all the force that's right here, it doesn't have anywhere to go. It just stops right here at the break and it does not transfer over to our shear wall. So what we do is we've developed a technique by which we can make sure that the earthquake forces do transfer back to the shear wall, wherever it might be. And I'm gonna show you what that is right now. So all we need to do is we need to put nails on either side of the break in the upper top plate so that you know we can connect the two together. Now the upper top plate is different from the lower top plate because the upper top plate right here, and here's the lower top plate, all the entire house sits right on top of this upper top plate. It doesn't sit on the bottom one, it sits on the, upper, on the top one. So that's why it's so critical. So we wanna make sure that when the house is moving on top of this upper top plate, that that force transfers back over to the other side. And remember, our shear wall is down this way. So all we need to do is we need to put nails on this side and then we nails on this side. I mean, we can calculate it and figure out exactly how many nails to put in, but man, just nail the heck out of it. You got a nail gun, you just shoot a billion nails on either side and you're all done. So let's see what those nails do to make sure that the entire house is connected to our shear wall. So this right here is the floor that you walk around on. And then this is a floor joist that supports the floor. And you see how this floor joist, there's a nail that comes in here and a nail that comes in here. There's a nail that comes in here and then there's a nail that comes in here. So when the floor tries to move, it goes into that floor joist and into the nails, see the nails right here, which in turn go to the upper top plate. So the upper top plate is going to move that way as the, you know, as the floor goes this way. When it goes that way, it pulls on these nails right here in the upper top plate. When those nails pull this way, they in turn pull down the lower top plate because you see how the nails come up from the lower top plate into the upper top plate lower top plate update so they're connected so the nails pull this way and when they pull this way they pull on the lower top plate and then they pull into these nails again on the lower top plate which are connected to the nails uh, connected to the upper top plate right here so now it pulls on the upper top plate which then in turn pull against the nails on top of our shear wall and then all the force goes into our shear wall, which is right where it belongs. So let's go ahead and look at the big picture on that. So here we have the break in the top plate. This entire, you know, cripple wall and floor and everything 
is disconnected from our shear wall. So now what we've done is we put a whole bunch of nails on this side of the brake, a whole bunch of nails on this side of the brake. So when the earthquake force comes this way, it travels, you know, through the nails into the lower top leg. Because remember, the nails go into the upper and into the lower. So it goes into the nails in the upper top plate. Those in turn are connected to the lower top plate. So then the lower top plate goes this way, comes over to the nails right here. Those nails are connected to the upper top plate right here. So in t what finally happens is all the force gets pulled up, pulled on that uh, upper top plate. And this is where all the nails are in the upper top plate. And so all the force is transferred into the shear wall where it belongs. So you see why this uh, connection is so critical. Now, if you don't do this, a large part of your house may not be protected because it's not attached to a shear wall. Remember, a shear wall is designed to attach the floor of the house from the foundation. And if you don't uh, make these connections, you know, join together like we just looked at, a certain part of the house might be a big part of the house will be disconnected from the foundation and your retrofit will not work as you want it to. In fact, no matter where the break is, if you have five of them, one of them, how many of them you have, you need to connect all of them together so that all the force goes into the shear walls, which is what you want your retrofit to do. If you're comparing bids between contractors, you know, they should talk about this. You know, they need to be doing something and they should be doing a lot. It's a really, really critical connection because, you know, if you don't do that, uh, you know, the rest of the house won't be connected to your shear walls, which are resisting all the earthquake and you don't want that to happen.